Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 79 of The Yacking Show. And it's our first show for the new year of 2021, and we wish everyone in our audience a happy new year and a better year than last year. So this is where we talk about life, business, and more, and we bring you tips and ideas for a changing world. We also like to stimulate your minds and get you thinking on things you might not otherwise think of. Today's guest is going to get you thinking, believe me, he'll have you thinking all over the place, backwards and forwards and around the corners. But it's not my job to waffle on about guests, that's Kathleen's job. So first, let me welcome Kathleen to our first show of the year. Hi, Kathleen, good to see you. Hi, Peter. And good to see you too. And Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to all of you. And thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate you and we love reading your comments. So do please keep them coming. And if anyone out there is interested in becoming a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Peter or myself. And as Peter mentioned, we do have a very special guest with us today. We're so absolutely thrilled to welcome David Weiss to the show. So hello, David. Welcome. How are hey, you today? Th- I'm doing great. Thanks. When you say special guest, people <laughs> new to this topic might be might think, oh, he's a special guest. <laughs> so, um, I, for those people, just hang around. I guarantee you, your mind will be blown from what I show you guys today. And we are so excited to hear more about this. So without further ado, to let our audience in on what the topic is today, it is the Flat Earth theory. And what I want to say to everybody out there is, you know, Peter and I, when Peter and I started this show, we wanted this show to represent all perspectives. And so what we ask is for you to keep an open mind, listen and question, and then come up to your own conclusions. So David, without, you know, uh, this goes so far off what everybody has been taught and it's and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say on this subject. But first, can you please tell our audience a little bit about your background and how you developed an interest in the flat earth theory and um, how you became very outspoken, an outspoken advocate to promote this perspective? It, n- nobody wakes up and says, hey, I want to be a flat earther because it comes with scorn and, and amazing. I mean, six years ago, I was introduced to it and I, I banned people from my social media from even suggesting that I look into such a stupid thing. Uh, I was doing a podcast on conspiracies, open-minded guy looking into deceptions of the world. And people said, hey, have you looked into the flat earth? Check out this video, delete, banned from social media. You're wasting my time. You don't deserve to even listen to my podcast. That was my attitude. But then I was forced to look by another researcher who I respect very much. I said, that's it. I didn't go into it with an open mind. I went into it with a biased mind saying, I'm going to disprove the flat earth. I'm going to prove the globe and put an end to this. Six years later, I'm the host of the flat earth podcast. I left my own company. I am the creator of the flat earth, sun, moon, and Zodiac clock app. And I'm interviewing with people like you. I'm doing 20 interviews a week right now. Wow. So (laughs) it's uh, it's a, you know, if this was a psyop, people go, it's a psyop to discredit other research um, no, it's not. And, and at the end of this, I will tell you what the PSYOP is. And when you understand what it is, you're going to understand why I, this big, could be pushed and how it is pushed. Oh, fascinating. Peter? So. <laughs> wow. I'm just trying to get my head around what you've already said. But how big is the following? Your following, not your personal following, which I know is very big, but the, the complete following. How many people are it's it's really hard to say, but we're waking up tens of thousands of people weekly now. Uh, wow. there, there's people coming in to this faster and faster. There was a survey done in Brazil last year. Um, they said, uh, ask people, what shape do you think the earth is, flat or, or spherical? And 11 million people said, uh, you know, 11 million people said they think it was flat. 11 million people in Brazil, which wow. isn't that, even that highly populated. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. The thing is, once you see flat earth, you never go back. Nobody becomes a flat earther and then goes back. Now, there are people that say, I'm going to look into this flat earth thing. And they Google flat earth. They end up at the Flat Earth Society, which is a controlled opposition disinformation site run by the government. Okay. And if you go there for any amount of time, you will never look at flat earth again. You'll go, this is the dumbest thing ever. You'll get a good laugh and you'll never go back. If you Google images of flat earth, 
you're going to get all the images from the Flat Earth Society of a yeah. disc floating in space or a turn up, you know, a big dirt turn up in space, water falling off the edge. All of that is to program your mind to laugh at Flat Earth. The yeah. people that hate Flat Earth are the people that first think it's a disc flying in space with other globular planets. And they don't, and the, and the other thing is they also don't know what the, the ball earth model is. And we're going to get into that a little bit because um, when I was asked, you know, about the ball, I didn't know, I didn't know that you, you never really taught what the model is. Because if you did, if you understood what the globe model is, you would realize it's complete and total pseudoscience. Okay. So, so David, we've been taught for 500 years that the earth is spherical <laughs> and rotates around the sun this is 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 such a departure from the official view so i'm going to just leave it to you now to explain to us from the beginning so what, what is I'm, this about i'm going to start with the uh, with the belief the programmed belief you guys are going to give me programmed responses today because that's sure. what i did and mm -hmm. the program responses we've known for 500 years. Aristophanes did it with sticks and shadows from Greece, and he figured out, you know, the the, the that the Earth was spherical, and he got the size right within two percent. Carl Sagan burned that into our brains in the 1980s and 90s in in Cosmos, and they've been touting it ever since. But that sticks and shadows experiment never happened. Aristophanes never did that experiment. It's never been repeated. And the oldest book that we can find a reference to it is a Rockefeller textbook in the 1980s, where it was inserted into our school system as a story to make you believe that we've always known the earth is a, uh, as a sphere or for, or for 500 years. I was interviewing a woman named Ruth, 102 years old, this past January in uh, January 2020. And she had been to the World's Fairs and I've been asking her about the World's Fairs because the World's Fairs is a whole nother rabbit hole. And uh, she was telling me a story about her fifth birthday party and, and she remembering all the details. I said, where did you go to elementary school? And she said, well, in Connecticut. I actually live in Connecticut. This was in Florida. And she told me what street the school was on, her kindergarten teacher's name, kids in the class. And I said, what did they teach you in science class in elementary school? And I'd never mentioned flat earth. And she looks at me, she goes, they taught me the earth was flat. And, and we're like, boom, like, oh my God. So I interviewed her. The interview is on my on my channel. I'll give you guys a link. You can put it with the show so people can see it. Um, it went it went viral, and then something funny happened after that. We can talk about that if we have time. But uh, then we found a woman, or actually before that, we found another woman in Croatia who said in the 1930s, everyone in Croatia knew the earth was flat. And then we found newspaper articles on microfilm from the early 1900s in the, in the UK and the United States where teachers were being persecuted for teaching heliocentric nonsense in school, okay? So my belief is uh, that this changeover happened in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and then we had the world wars, just the, you know, they destroyed museums. They are wiping out the old world. That's what the world's fairs were about, a transition from the old world to this new world. And there was a reset event in the early 1900s, a reset event where everybody was wearing masks and everybody was getting inoculations mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. A coincidence? I don't know. So, so to say we've known for 500 years is is a, is a belief that you have. There's no there's no proof of that. We have proof that we haven't known for 500 years. We've known for a hundred years, or we've been told for close to a hundred years. So. Let's talk about what the flat earth is, yes. mm -hmm. what the globe earth is, and then, and then we'll go from there. And then uh, I'll show you my app, which will basically give me a two or three minute presentation on that. And then you guys will really understand um, what, what the flat earth, flat earth and the globe earth is. So the, think about what a puddle is. A puddle is where water accumulates at the low spot in the land, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then the edge of the puddle is just where the land is higher than the water surface. Expand that to a pond, it's the same thing, just bigger. A lake, bigger. And think of all of the world's oceans. All of the world's oceans are a giant pond. And the land that surrounds them is higher than the water, so that's the shoreline of the pond, okay? Giant mm -hmm. pond, and that land is called Antarctica. Antarctica is not the ball, not an island, you know, a continent at the bottom of a ball. It's the land that surrounds us. And check this out. If you went on a boat to any, any uh, continent, anywhere, um, if you went to you know, any island, any country, whatever, you get off the boat, you walk into town, all is fine. But if you go to Antarctica, 
the land is 200 feet over your head. It's the highest land on earth, right? I'm just looking at my lights. Um, it's the highest land on earth. And that's the, you know, so we live in the Antarctic basin. All right, it's all right. So, so we live in the, in the Antarctic basin. It kind of looks like this. You know, here are some islands. These are all the continents. The shoreline is Antarctica. What's beyond there? I don't know because this pink line here, no one's allowed to explore independently beyond this, this line, 60 degrees south latitude. So that the Antarctic Treaty in 1957 was established for conservation reasons, right? Before conservation mm -hmm, was even mm -hmm. a word. You know, we must protect the ice. No one could drop a cigarette butt on the ice and we must protect the penguins, but meanwhile we can deforest the Amazon and do all sorts of stuff. But what's out here, we don't know. We can speculate about it during this conversation, but that's speculation. Anything above our heads or beyond the shoreline of Antarctica is speculation. Now there's lots of science that we can do to, um, say, hey, that's probably what's out there. But again, I can show you that the earth is flat by what's underneath our feet, what we can touch, what we can see, what we can sense, all right? Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a quick one for you, Dave. Sorry, the North Pole is right in the middle of that circle then, is it? Correct, so the okay. North Pole is the center of the flat earth, right here, it's the magnetic right north, all right? Okay. And yep. so let's talk about circumnavigation. Now you can circumnavigate around, if I put a compass down, this compass has to point towards the north the whole time. Mm -hmm. So if yep. I want a dead wreck in east or west, I have to make a circle. So if I'm following 90 degrees or 270 degrees, which is east and west, mm -hmm. I have to actually keep turning to maintain that compass heading because the compass has to point towards the center the whole time. So east and west are circles. Guess what? That doesn't prove the earth is flat or a globe because you can do it on both. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so I'm going. Uh, where am I going? West there, because everything's backwards for me. Um, or is that east? Whatever. I'm going whatever way I'm going. So now I'm showing you. Now, if I go in a straight line and ignore the compass, I'm no longer going east or west. It immediately Correct. becomes south. Yep. Right, because I'm moving away from the center. South yes. is every direction away from the center. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't prove the Earth is flat no. or globe. Or globe. <clears throat> what what uh what what does prove it though it what 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 would prove the earth is a globe is if somebody can go south and pop mm -hmm. up over on the other side because they're going right. underneath antarctica nobody has ever done that no one's ever gone from santiago south and popped up over in australia no one's ever done it is that so i heard that there are no flights directly from Australia to South America. Well, that, that's half true and half not true. There oh. are flights, <clears throat> but okay. so this would be the quickest route mm -hmm. from Santiago to Australia. Right. But people say you're not allowed to fly over Antarctica because it's too dangerous, too desolate. That's a lame excuse, not true, but let's just say it is. So let's just say, why don't you just stay at this, you know, 60 degrees, 55 degrees South and just go around this short little clip right here. Right. That would be the shortest mm -hmm. way to go to Antarctica. But most, and I say most because there's going to people that are going to jump on the bandwagon. Um, that's not what I'm, I, that's the wrong slide. So what most people will say is there are direct flights and I'm going to talk about that in a second. I just moved my other flight. So the actual flight path, if I could speak, um, God, why they, it, this uh, program keeps moving my, my, um, it's going to come. Sorry about that. That's okay. So, so what they do is when you go from Santiago, it takes you all oh, here. Here we go. It takes you all the way up to North America, across yeah. North America, and then all the way back down to West, uh, um, West Australia or uh, or if you want to go over here, the flight path goes all the way up to, to America, all the way over to Europe or Dubai, and then comes down, mm -hmm. okay? But if you look at that on a flat earth map, that's a straight line, mm -hmm. right? If I wanted to go to the other side of, I go over here, look, I'm going through Europe and I'm going to the other side of Australia. It's a straight line, right? This 
path is ridiculous. Now, I, I, I forgot to say at the beginning, I'm going to tell you guys some in crazy, ridiculous things. And I'm going to tell you some things that you go, oh, that, that kind of makes sense. Well, the crazy, ridiculous things are the globe. And the things that make sense are going to be the flat earth, right? This doesn't make any sense, this oh. flight path, if it's a oh. globe. Right. This makes perfect sense. So what do the people that believe it's a sphere, how do they explain that then? How do they explain they, that? Well, they say that, you know, the airlines need to make money. They need to pick up other passengers and, <laughs> you know, and, and crossing the Southern Oceans is too desolate. It would cost too much if there was a crash or all sorts of lame excuses. However, there are direct flights from here to here. And in you know, like 12, 15, 18 hours, you know, in within a uh, time frame that you could say that works on a globe. But I'll show you on the app in a moment. But there's wind currents that circle, make perfect circles up here. I could actually show you. Um, you know, you know how they show us the trade winds, how they yep. go up and they go down. This big mm -hmm. giant sine wave. Did, did that ever make sense to you in school? This, Not really. If you plot that out on a flat Earth, it's this. They make perfect circles. Uh, right, right. So these pink and yellow winds are going two to 300 miles an hour in a, in a circle. So you can go from, if Santiago is over here, you can get in an airplane, get a 200, 300 mile an hour tailwind and ride that all the way over. Now, the only planes that go direct, Qantas has one airplane. And they might have one or two. Uh, maybe they have a couple of it, but it's a certain model airplane that only a specific number of military pilots are allowed to fly. It has seven layers of heat resistant paint on it, special heat resistant paint. What is that telling you? It's telling you that, guess what? Planes go faster than the planes did in the 1960s. They've got right. planes that can go faster. So even if that plane just went like 800, 900 miles an hour at a 200 mile an hour tailwind, 1100 miles, the flight times make sense. What happens though with these direct flights is often they're canceled at the last minute. Oh, flight's canceled because these winds are consistent, but they're not always consistent. So uh -huh. if these winds shut down, the flight's canceled. Sometimes the plane takes off and it's five hours late. Five hours late. So you know because that they're the dealing wind. with, with winds and, and, and whatnot. Right. So that's how the direct flights are done. And that's the end of it. It's really basically simple. And I'll show you where you can find that information if you want, if you want more. Um, so real quick about the heliocentric model. How fast is the Earth spinning on the helio nonsensical model, I like to call it? Do you know? Yeah. I didn't know any of these questions when I was asked originally. So don't worry. Uh, for you to do a bigger screen share? Um, you can make me bigger, but uh, I, I can't. You can make me the, the presenting window. Presenter. Yeah, yeah, put David as presenter. So uh, I don't see it, but you tell me if, if it's up. Uh, so I, you don't really need it. It's okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Okay. So the earth is supposedly spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Okay. Perfect. That's that's the official story. So when you're watching the sunset on the heliocentric earth, you believe that you're on the top of the ball. You're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound, which is making the sun appear to go down. Because you're on the ball, you know, you're you're tipping over backwards and it's making the sun appear to go down. Okay? okay. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> While you're spinning, you're orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. Funny number that mm -hmm. they came up with. Okay. While you're chasing the sun, you're chasing the sun at a half a million miles an hour. And somehow all of the other planets stay on the same plane you know, chasing the sun. They're all staying on this same plane. None of them are lagging behind. None of them are going ahead. They're all orbiting while the sun's moving. And by the way, the sun is going in a circle. The, the sun is going around the universe at a million, around the solar system at like a million or two million miles an hour. So we're moving in four different directions at once. Four different directions at once. And the earth, if this is the, if my microphone is the Sun, the Earth speeds up and slows down and speeds up and slows down. Let's say you're in a car going 100 miles an hour on a perfectly smooth straight road and you have a plate and somebody pours water on that plate and you're holding it. You could do it. Now, if that car starts to take a turn, what's going to happen to that water? End up is in it, the driver's lap. <laughs> is it going to look like this? You know, is oh. it going to look like this? 
No. Are you going to be able to build things that balance like that? Right? Yep. <laughs> the, the earth does not move. Everything that we see in the sky, what about planets? We'll get there. There are no other planets. Get that out of your head. Everything we see in the sky is within the earth system. Okay. Our optics have outgrown their lies. So let's start. Um, let's start with water. Water, large bodies of water at rest lay flat. We've tested mm -hmm. with lasers, microwaves. <clears throat> We've tested with um, mirror flashes of the sun. Uh, and there is a simple math formula for the 24,901 mile around ball that they tell us we live on where the curvature is eight inches per mile squared. And the reason you square the miles because it was eight inches per mile, that would just be a ramp. Mm -hmm. But if you're going off a ball, that ball is going to get steeper and steeper as you move. So the first mile is just an eight inch drop. Second mile is two times two. This is four times eight. So it's 32 inches. Three miles is six feet. And it just drops off faster and faster after that. This is undisputed heliocentric ball, you know, curvature math. Right. So a six foot tall person standing at the edge of calm water should be able to see three miles and then the surface of that water should drop below the curve and he shouldn't be able to see the water, any, the, the surface of the water anymore. But here is an oil rig. We have the camera one foot off the ground where, the, where according to ball math, the, curve, the earth should be tilt, dropping behind the horizon at mm -hmm. 1.2 miles away. This is, you know, this is 9.4 miles. Um, there should be 59 feet of curvature. Not only can we see this rig, we can see water for miles beyond it. Mm -hmm. Miles mm -hmm. and miles and miles. We have hundreds of examples of this. We can, we also, we've done it with mirror flashes and lasers and there's no curvature. Water lays flat. We can see too far. End of story. There's no curvature. Now people say, well, maybe the earth is bigger. Well, we see things with our infrared cameras now so far away that the earth would have to be over a thousand times bigger. Okay. If you want to believe the earth is a thousand times bigger ball, I think that's you've, you've departed away from the heliocentric model enough to understand that you're being lied to. How do you explain high tide, low tide? High tide, low tide, um, their tides are very interesting. And, and some people believe that the earth itself is breathing in and out twice a day at the North Pole. That's why there's 30 foot tides at the North Pole and like one foot tides in the South. You know, the tides in the, in, on the equator, like in the Maldives are less than a foot, but mm -hmm. in Alaska, they're 30, over 30 feet, 30 foot tides. But people say the, the, that the moon is causing the high tide, right? So when there's a full moon, you have a really big high tide. How come when there's a new moon, you don't have a really big high tide? The moon's still there. It just doesn't have any sunlight on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the gravity has nothing to do with tides. The, the, we live in a, a, the only forces on this plan, on this plane are electricity and magnetism. The earth is electric. We're electric. Mm -hmm. um, the sun and the moon are part of the earth battery. They're the anode and cathode of the battery system. The salt water carries the current. The land is what's the salt bridge of the battery. If you, if you look into how batteries work, you'll mm -hmm. see like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Why are there only tides in salt water and not fresh water? Okay. And then if you look at tide maps, there's these tidal nodes all over the place where there's these weird high tides in different places. And it has nothing to do with the moon. We've just been sold that it has to do with the moon. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, here's the earth and here's the moon. If the, there, and there's a high tide right here. And he said, that's because the moon is pulling the water away with its gravity. But there's also a high tide over here. And Neil mm -hmm. deGrasse Tyson says, that's because the moon is pulling the earth away from the water on the other side. I told you I'd say some crazy, ridiculous <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, That's yeah, another yeah. one of them, okay? <laughs> right, so, you know, Neil said, well, people are like, what about, I've seen the curve from an airplane. So we've proven that you can't see the curve from, from we can't, you can't see the curve from an airplane. So they move the globe post again and go, well, you have to be at 60,000 feet. And we proved that no one ever saw it from the Concorde. And they're like, well, you have to be at 100,000 feet. And we set, we set balloons up to 120,000 feet and showed that it's perfectly flat. Okay. And uh, then he says, well, you have to be higher than that, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the Globers will say because uh, Felix Baumgarten, the guy that did the Red Bull jump, are you familiar with the Red Bull jump? Yeah. Yeah. So 
he he saw the the curvature of the earth from up there and uh here it is so this is felix and when he got down in his interview he goes yep i saw the curve of the earth now most flat earthers will say that he was paid to say that as part of the globe deception could be or perhaps he just expected to see the curve of the earth. He was told he was going to be high enough to see the curve of the earth. He has a rounded glass helmet on, which will make him see a curve even at ground level because he's looking through curved glass. So he may have saw the curve, thought he saw the curve, and believes it himself. But look at this. We've looked at this land. And if you look at this little lake, this little rivers and stuff, this is all New Mexico. All. This is planet New Mexico. This is a fisheye lens. You know what a fisheye lens mm -hmm. that bends yeah, and distorts yeah. things? So that's a fisheye lens. I have another video, actually. I'm, I'm probably going to put it on the app later this week, um, showing he did another test jump that they didn't televise that didn't use a fisheye lens. Ah, Everything okay. was flat yeah. and at eye level. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so... Um, let me let me share the app and then we yeah. can go into some other things. So, sure. so, so this is called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. And now I made it. Uh, I made it so I could show people, I could show people what the Flat Earth does when I'm talking to them. And I wasn't even going to publish it, but then everyone loved it, and I've been working on it for over two years now. So, so here here it is. The sky is the perfect clock. The sun is the hour hand, and it goes around once every 24 hours. So think about the controllers. They're like, hey, we're going to give them clocks, but we better make it go around twice so they don't figure out that it's really the sky clock, okay? The sun only goes around once a day. So wherever the sun is, it's 12 noon. The sun, I'm going to speed it up. The sun is going faster than the moon. It actually laps the moon once every 28 days. So the moon and its in its phases and its quarters keep track of the weeks and the months or the moons. The sun keeps track of the hours and the days. Okay, mm -hmm. like a perfect clock. So right now we're in a new moon, and the second the sun will be go will come out from the moon will come out from behind. There it is. You got a waxing crescent, and the sun will lap the moon once every twenty eight days. So. It's a perfect clock. This proves that the Earth is stationary and everything is within the Earth system um, circling. I, and I'll explain it perfectly. So I'm going to turn on, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to turn on the stars. So here's the zodiac. We have our 12 zodiac signs. And they are, they are going slightly faster than the sun. So there's another wheel in the sky that's turning. And it's going slightly faster than the sun. But this zodiac wheel will only outrun the sun you guys can see this whole the whole app right yeah yeah we can see right. it yeah okay and the the it'll out it'll lap it once a month so next month next month the sun will be in the previous zodiac and then it'll be in the one before that and the one before that so the sun is literally uh, you know the wheel is lapping the sun so it keeps track of the seasons and the years uh... okay and so, so again, if you go out tonight and look at the stars and mark where they are in the sky, and then next year, same night, same time, go out, every star will be in the exact same place, except the wandering stars. Well, what are wandering stars? Well, they used to be called planets, but now they're all named after gods, and they're wandering on their own path. So that's a whole other story. We'll get into that a little bit. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn on the... the um, this is the, the, the time zone wheel. So this shows you what time it is. Like right now it's 6.30 in the morning in Eastern Australia, or it's uh, 6 or 5 p.m. In, uh, in South Africa. You see? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I turn it, it turns with the sun. So there are all the time zones moving around. Um, <clears throat> so the question is people say, uh, I, you know, you, everyone should have questions about flat earth. So if you hit the question mark, up come all of the questions that you might have. You're like, hey, you know, where's the edge? Or you Yeah, know, I was about to ask you that. If if the perimeter of the planet is is ice sure. and you can only go so far, but how far does it go? And well we'll we'll get there in a second. Let me sure. just finish this up. I got 60 seconds left. Sure. So what about seasons or you know, why the lie? You know, why the lie mm -hmm. or are uh, all space agencies in on the lie, right? If I click, if I click that one, 
up comes a playlist of all the videos that NASA will not feed you. Like not NASA, that Google will not feed you. So if you're looking for information, it's all here. Yeah. It, so, so, and more videos are added all the time. So all of your questions are answered there. There's all sorts of other information on this other, this is the web page. Wow. We have a curvature calculator in there. If you click the curvature calculator, you can say, hey, I'm looking at something. It's, and I know how far away it is. You put in your height, the distance, it'll tell you how much curve should be there. And then you'll be like, huh, I shouldn't be able to see it. I can see it. I just proved the earth is flat. There's all sorts of other stuff. There's different languages, um, playlists. Uh, the, and then the, here's what it is. Down here in the lower left corner, the featured video of the day. Every day there's a new video. I do short ones during the week, longer ones on the weekend. I say, take the Flat Earth app challenge. If you think Flat Earth is stupid, buy the app. It's $2.99, one-time fee. And watch the video every day for two weeks. And what happens is people say, hey, you know, I saw you on uh, so-and-so show and I bought your stupid app for $2.99, but I didn't want to wait every day. So I hit that archive button, which is the, the little arrow next to it. And, uh, and I pulled up all of the videos that it brings up all of the videos from the current month and it'll show you all of the other months as it loads. Here it comes. And so here are all the other videos so you can wow. dive into that. And if you hit the little hamburger at the top, all the videos from all the other months are in there. And they're like, I haven't slept in two days. My partner thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, what do I do? And I'm like, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Flat Earth. Um, it has a compass, shows you how the compass work. East and, east and west are circles, okay? Every direction away from the center is south. And then all of that other area out there is land, is, is ice, mountains. Um, Admiral Byrd went out in Antarctica in, 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 just before the Antarctic Treaty and said he found land bigger than the United States that's never been touched by human feet. And, and then the Antarctic Treaty happened and nobody, that's the last we heard of it. So it shows you how that works. Um, you know, it's got a, you can pull up the, the current wind charts of the world. So this shows you um, those, those winds I was, was talking about. Mm -hmm. This is currently how the winds are rotating on the earth. Uh, it, does, it does a plethora of stuff. Um, has your local weather so you know what to put on in the morning when you're checking your app and watching your video. So it does, it does a ton of stuff. And you know, you can go into settings and change the backgrounds. There's all these different backgrounds. I can pick that background. Look, boom, whatever you, whatever you want. You can have different <laughs> backgrounds and it does tons of stuff. But if you want to learn about Flat Earth, this is the ticket. You know, you're buying me a half a beer. This is how I support myself now. And, and then you have a lifetime of information and then you too can lose the respect of your family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, some of us have done that already, I think. <laughs> Oh, I'm speaking, oh speaking for myself, speaking for myself. So, wow, Dave, that's a lot, a lot to get my head around, our heads around. Yeah. But one of the things that's just listening to you, a very short question, why? Why, why, why this great, in your words, this great deception, this great fraud of trying to convince people for the last however many hundred years that the earth is in fact a globe when you put all the evidence it's not? It's the question everyone asks, and I, I love answering it at the end, but let's answer it now. So why the lie? So before I get into Flat Earth, I might be listening to a podcast like you guys or whatever on whatever topic, a conspiracy, about health, whatever. And I got three pages of notes. I'm like, these guys are great. I love everything they're saying. And then they would mention the Bible, the Quran, Jesus, anything. I'd rip up those pages. I'd unsubscribe, and I'd never listen to them again because they're religious kooks, Okay. That was, that, that was me. But then when I was trying to debunk the flat earth mm -hmm. and prove the globe, I realized, hmm, we're not a random accident. This place is created. It's intelligently designed. Therefore, there's a creator, okay? Now, there's lots of people that have found God and, and are having good lives and think they live on a ball, and that's fine. But... If you live in a heliocentric thought pattern, uh, there's opportunity for there not to be God because Earth is a random explosion and it just happened. And you're spinning out of control on a speck with infinite number of other specks in an infinite expanding godless or distant God universe. And your actions and thoughts really have no consequence, consequences at all. 
But when you realize that this world is created for us, we are at the center of creation. We are here having a, an experience in this realm where our thoughts create our reality, where you know th what they don't want us to know is that we have, nobody has dominion over us. Right now, the world is a mess because mm -hmm. people are lost in space. They don't know where they are. They don't know that they have power. The elite, here's the thing. You can call it universal law. Some people call it God's law, natural law, whatever it is. They can't take away our free will. They can't. We are that nobody can take away our God-given um, free will unless they tell us what they're doing and we don't say no. That's just like saying yes in this system. So they they have us in a in a situation where um, people are afraid. They're spinning out of control. They're subconscious you know, it, prob their, their soul knows the truth, but their conscience, you know, their, their, their thoughts are thinking, they have them spinning out of control in space, lost, mm -hmm. you know, where an asteroid could take you out at any moment, that you're insignificant. So if you have that mindset, you really can't make the best decisions for your life. And, and what people don't realize is all of this nonsense, without saying too much, all the nonsense that's going on in the world, it's none of it. You don't have to pay attention to any of it. You can take your power back. We've had conferences. We just had a conference, uh, Flat Earth Conference in, uh, in South Carolina in October. 400 plus of us there, everybody healthy, hugging, not wearing any face diapers. You know, everyone is awake and aware to the deceptions of the world. Mm -hmm. but, but they, and they don't want that because these people have taken their power back because they're like, wait a minute, I am more powerful than they want us to believe. Mm -hmm. Here's mm -hmm. the PSYOP. The PSYOP isn't the earth is flat and, and stuff like that. The PSYOP is that your thoughts create your reality. You guys thought of this podcast. You believed in it and you created it with your thoughts. Everything mm -hmm. you have in your life, every situation you have in your life is created with your thought patterns. It's more magical than you can even realize because it's all been pounded out of us in this you know, that we live in this solid world and, you know, you have to work hard and, and, you know, they, they have us not realizing that we are these powerful um, co-creating beings. They don't want us to know that. Right. Okay. That's why. So this lie is so big. It's bigger than everything else combined. I mean, if you look at Every day, there's new space articles. All the space agencies of the world, all, all, all of the universities, all of the science programs, everything is all globe programming. All of the movies, all of kids programming, all television shows, they all have globes in it. It's all globe programming. You were taught that the earth is a ball before you speak. Mm -hmm. You probably had a earth, you know, um, a solar system mobile over your crib. You got space sheets on half these cribs. Then all of the children's programming, Sesame Street has astronauts and rockets and planets and moons and all sorts of stuff. It's all to program your mind because, the, you know, the term prison planet, you believe that you live on a ball. That's a prison, right? There could be more lands far beyond the shoreline of Antarctica. You know, what's out there? You know, we're told that that plane goes on, that ice goes on for hundreds of miles, and then there's a mountain range taller than Everest. Is there a dome that connects out there, like this dome right here? Okay. Or is there other lands out there? Some, some theorize that perhaps we live here. This is Antarctica. And then there's other worlds out here, mm -hmm. other oceans out here. Maybe the people that are pulling the strings of the puppets that are ruling our realm all live out here in this tropical paradise. Okay. Again, anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica or over our heads is off limits. So let, let's just talk about space for a second. You know, if you watch any NASA space launch, it goes up, it goes out, and a minute later it runs out of fuel. It's all, and you're watching a cartoon with, inside of a minute. You're watching a cartoon. But in, in Arizona, these guys launched this amateur rocket and it went straight up super fast, spinning, 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 spinning. And then at 73 miles, it went kerplunk, the sound like when you drop a, a stone into a pond, like it went into water. But I don't think it was water, it was something more viscous, right? Mm -hmm. And it started floating. 
Okay. And when it turned on its side, you're going to see over here in a second, I'll, and I'll slow it down, is we can see the moon. So ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. And then all of a sudden, bam, this little dot, there it is. There's the moon right there. Okay. That's the moon. There's no doubt. We zoom in on it. It's the moon. Here's the problem. This was in Arizona. At the time of this launch, the moon was over Australia. Australia. Okay. That would be straight through the earth from that vantage point to see mm -hmm. the moon. But we can see it over there. Do you know why? Come on. Give it to me. Yeah, because it's flat. <laughs> Line of sight. Right. So, well, go ahead. <laughs> I, I just, you're, you're blowing my mind here. You really are. Yeah. But I just, I just, I need to ask this because, you know, when we see astronauts go into space, and what they they show back are images of the planet as a globe, this big beautiful globe. Okay. And, Here we and go. I'm trying to get my head around what you just said in terms of of. So you know that um, global, which is you know I, I I believe that I believe there's a controlled narrative for sure. Right. And astronauts what, are our heroes. Astronauts are our heroes. The whole thing, I'm destroy that. So ready, you know, brace yourself. Don't forget right. to breathe while I'm talking. <laughs> if I show you that NASA's lying about one thing, they're done. They're finished. Everything unwinds. But I'm going to show you an infinite number of things. And 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 the app are what are what about all the space agencies? <laughs> Click that and and you're finished. Do you know that for the space station, the, they, they train at the National Buoyancy Lab. They have a underwater replica of the space station and they do it in a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. So, and then they show us stuff like this. This was done in a swimming pool, okay? It was just a CGI background. If you, um, if you watch these spacewalks, often we see bubbles and stuff, but here they are in the pool. They, they green it up and bam, it's almost cut off a little bit, but this is what they show us down here, right? They're faking space on every level. Let's just look at some images of Earth. NASA, by the way, NASA admits they have no photographs of Earth. They admit it. This one here is the blue marble that was on everyone's iPhone. Yeah. The, a NASA visual artist named Robert Simmons admitted that he made it in Photoshop from strips of data. Because he said, that it, it, and his quote is, it's Photoshop because it has to be. Okay? But let's just take a look. Let's just assume... These are NASA's claiming these are photos. Look at the United States. It's this size here, and it's this size over here. It's twice the size. These balls are the same, but people say, well, you're looking at that at a different angle. Well, this one is here. If I tilted this ball back, it gets smaller. smaller. It doesn't get yeah. bigger. This one's bigger, and it's tilted back. That mm -hmm. compounds the problem, okay? On top of that, these, uh, you know, if you look at it, and, and he admits, uh, Robert Simmons admits that he uses um, Photoshop uh, to, to um, here we go, to uh, put the clouds in. If you look in all these different circles, these clouds are stepped and repeated. They're the same clouds again and again and again. There's millions of these. And I'm just showing you some of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just showed you that that's not a photograph of Earth. Let's look at the at the um, twenty uh, the twenty twelve image of Earth, which is which is horrible. There's the United States when we just looked at. I took this proportionate. You know, this is the land masses compared to each other. Mm -hmm. I put a circle here showing you. All right, this is what we're seeing. All of this land, all of this land, all of this land, all of this land, all of this land has to be on the other side of that ball. Mm -hmm. That's another one of those crazy, ridiculous, stupid things I was going to say. And I'm mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. this is a painting. They can't even get their proportions right. Okay? Yeah. This is, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's complete and total nonsense. Complete okay. and total nonsense. David, so, I, I still have to ask. I, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. still trying to get my head around this because uh, – We've all been taught in schools, and you were as well at one point, where the, the, the planet is spherical. Okay, going back through time, it, had we been taught instead of spherical, we were taught this narrative. I, I, I'm not seeing the whole point of this whole hoax. 
Um, why, why the lie? You still don't want the lie? And, and yeah. other ways of controlling people's minds. Oh boy, are we ever seeing that now? If, but here, this, here's, the, here, here's the bottom line is they're hiding the creator because mm -hmm. you can manipulate someone's mind if they're just a random accident. But if you, if you, uh, once you see that you, that there is a creator that you lose control, because when you see that you realize that you have certain inalienable, inalienable rights uh, by natural law, and you can literally take your power back. You, you are not in, we're not in fear of being hit by a, an asteroid or a nuclear bomb. All that stuff is nonsense. It's all nonsense. It's all fear. Cause when you're in fear, you can't, um, live your soul's journey. You, you, your fear is the only thing that, that will, we stop, will stop you from achieving anything. Fear is the only reason for failure. Okay? I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But there's a lot of people that believe in creation. Yeah, well, there are. And that's great. They don't want any, they don't care about them. All right, those people are in already. We'll let them be. They don't care about me. I already know the earth is flat. They care about you because you don't know the earth is flat yet. Now, they don't, there's, there's a large percentage of the world that doesn't believe in a creator. They yep. want to keep it that way. Evil is trying to hide the creator. You know, the, the, the people that run this world, you guys are, you guys know, there's a lot of evil. There's mm -hmm. evil beyond what even researchers like us are willing to admit that th that happens out there because it's insane. But these evil people, and I use the word people liberally, um, don't they they want to control our minds and they're doing it the television the tell live vision you know they're they're literally controlling our mind i'm showing you piece by piece that nasa's taking everything here let's just look on the space station you know how they're always floating around mm -hmm. flipping their microphone around and doing stuff well here they are on the space station and i zoomed in they had a green screen glitch look at this guy's harness you can see his harness it oh was, yeah it's supposed to mask out his harness, but it's screwed up. And then these guys are playing with what's called augmented reality. It, it'll show. It'll show in a second. Yeah. They have a. He's flipping his hat around, and he's supposed to hand the hat to the other guy in the air. But the guy was looking at the monitor, and he missed it. He's manipulating something that's not there. He missed it, and he went to put it away. Um, but but it, he he missed it and he literally goes and puts it away so i'm wondering if it's going to show up see he's flipping it around there i don't know why it's not coming up yet give it a, give it a second maybe it's a little longer clip than i realized uh but the guy oh here it comes ready so he holds it there the guy he takes his eyes off the monitor and he grabs the hat and he puts it away it's going back and forth there he puts it away, and if you watch his eyes, he's freaking out. He knows he missed it. They're both fumbling their words. He missed it. So these guys aren't even in that room. Here, here's another one. These guys were just finishing up. They're saying goodbye to Mission Control, and the green screen glitched out. <laughs> yeah. Everything that was floating near them glitched out, and everything that wasn't floating just stayed. These guys aren't even in the same room together. Okay. We have hundreds of these. We have them where astronauts are going around the corner and they fade it out and they, they become transparent before they go around the corner because there is no corner. In that situation, they were in a zero G flight doing a quick edit of a guy floating through the room and that's in a zero G anti-gravity plane. You know about the yeah, zero yeah. G plane. So um, there's another one. There's one where they were on, this is years ago and they no longer do this live because of this very incident. Uh, the morning news, they're like, we're going to have a, sp a rare um, live communication with the guys on the space shuttle. It was the space shuttle, or maybe it was even, um, it was, the, was it the space shuttle or, or, or the, the, uh, the, before the space station, it was um, Skylab or whatever. Yeah. So they were, were going to talk to these guys on there. They said, we were waiting for them to come in line with the satellite to get the communications. And we're only going to have them for, you know, for a minute, right? because they can only float in a, anti, a zero G plane for just about a minute, just under a minute, okay? So they're talking to the guys and you got three guys going and one guy's talking and one guy's got like a roll of duct tape spinning in the air and he's got two objects spinning and they're dazzling everybody with all of the stuff. And then all of a sudden they all went bam into the <laughs> side wall at the same time. They all <laughs> crashed into the side wall and the TV cut away and they're like, oh, it was a sudden shift in the space station. 
uh, a sudden shift yeah. in the space station. But then when you look at the video, what I did is I took the I took the video and I turned it uh, 90 degrees. I turned it 90 degrees. Um, I turned it 90 degrees. So when they crashed, they crashed down. And I put that side by side with the end of a zero G flight where everyone's floating around. And then when the when it comes to the end of the parabolic arc, everybody falls the exact same way that these guys went into the wall. And it's because they were filming them sideways just to make it more confusing. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. and the, the other dead giveaway, this was a, a weird shift in the space station that made them crash into the wall. But the, the guy in the foreground, the astronaut, he fell down on his back and he caught both objects with one hand, like he'd done it a million times before. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He caught a bam, bam, just like that. And, and that just was that he's practiced this 150 times. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> Again, nobody has ever been into space because space doesn't exist. I just showed you that with the rocket hitting. Let, yeah. let's, okay, let's so, so, so when the space shuttles, when, I mean, many of us stayed up to watch the space shuttle go up out of Cape Canaveral. And so yeah. when it shoots up, where is it going? Yeah, so this is a, this is a, this is a tough one. So okay. most of the time when you're seeing something launch, it's literally just going up and it goes out over the Bermuda Triangle and it disappears and either they recover it from the air. Um, most of them are lighter than air vehicles. There's never anybody on them. So I'm not gonna, because we're on YouTube, I'm not gonna say a lot about this image here, but this is the, mm -hmm. this is the, the, the famous explosion that happened that mm -hmm. every, kid for the first time ever in school they brought televisions into every room every kid got to watch this live because this is a form of trauma-based mind control and boom but if you look all of these people have twin identical twins that are alive today that are working at universities what? okay we have video of this woman talking and this woman talking she's a professor at at uh at yale i think and they're the same dimple, same voice, same hand gestures. Same, there's no question. It's the same person. But let's just say they all had identical twins. None of the twins were at the funerals. None of the twins showed up at their siblings' funerals. Okay? <laughs> this is, this is, that's all I have to say about that because that's all you can say about that in the in, in, you know, YouTube world. I think we're running well over time, which is great. I think mean, there's been so much we could go for. I know we could go for another hour, but it'll take me forever to edit and upload that. So I think we're going to have to call it a day pretty soon. But Dave, how can people get your app? So the best way uh, to find me again is my app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. You can just point your camera, if you're looking at a computer screen, right at that, and just point your camera at it, and it'll show up right on your yeah. phone. Okay. Or you can just uh, search the Apple App Store or the Android Google Play Store for Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If you just type in Flat Earth Clock, it'll come right up. And it's okay. by Blue Water Bay. There's a couple imitations out there that are really horrible. So if you get the horrible one, don't send me an email telling me my <laughs> app sucks because it's not my app. Okay. Um, and you can find me at theflatearthpodcast.com. Com, right. And the Flat Earth Podcast is my podcast on your podcast player on your phone. Just search that in. And if you want to take the Flat Earth podcast challenge listen to the first 10 episodes start at the beginning listen to 10 episodes and just like the apple do to you you'll lose the respect of your family and friends and <laughs> you're crazy uh, well, that's and, that's and fascinating that's it also the facebook page the flat earth podcast all it's all pretty easy pretty straightforward so, okay well from my side that that was absolutely fascinating i've had my own questions about space space exploration and a whole lot of stuff and dates and times and air flights, but that's yeah. the show's not about me. So I found a lot of what you said really compelling and very, very interesting. P Peter, if, if uh, NASA is hard for a lot of people, uh, especially, you know, the, or, or this older generation, which I'm part of, uh, people that were alive during the moon landings, because it's such part of our, like, wow, the moon sure. landings on the app, click about, uh, click the, what about NASA and uh, bring food and water, Kathleen, Drink some water after this. this is, you just got a you just got a severe mental beating here, and uh, it's going to be a lot to take in. So drink some good water. Well, I, re hydrate, I remember hydrate. actually watching the moon landings and and thinking, is there wind on the moon because the flag was flapping? So tomorrow, get the app. 
everybody get the app. Oh, well, this one's going to come out the, tomorrow or the next day. I have, we have a great moon landing. Uh, completely destroys the footage from the moon landing. And we'll All show right. you how they do it. It's amazing. Great. Um, I'm going to hand over to Kathleen. Dave, for me, thank you very much. I was, that was fascinating. It really was. Yeah. Kathleen. You've been such a, an amazing guest. Thank you so much for being with us, Dave. And thank you all so very much for tuning in. We so appreciate you and we enjoy reading your comments. So do please keep them coming. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Um, and if anybody out there is interested in being a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Peter or myself. And whew, until next time, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>